Hey there, it's Corey once again. I've got some pictures that uh, didn't quite make it into the last video. Uh, these are just stills of me running the hose and uh, hookups. Here's the uh, top of the box with the radiator and the fan and hose. Here's the cut that I made on the opposite side. Here's the back where the hoses come out. It's a uh, half inch to uh, three eighths inch. This is the uh, opposite side of the box with the cut through and the flow rate meter. Here's the bottom of the box where the manifold uh, is outside. And here is the setup. Remember when placing hose like this, uh, map it very carefully. You don't want any pinches and uh, any restriction of flow. As I put these on, uh, I tighten them not so tight that it will crimp the hose or damage it anyway, just enough to uh, place it until I'm happy with it, and then it's uh, easily removed or secured in place. Here's a shot of me heating a hose with hot water so I can make it go where I want it to. Remember when uh, hooking up the hose to make sure the nipples and barbs uh, fit securely as they uh, will be the only thing protecting your electrics, electronics from water damage. Uh, when you are putting in water, uh, I've discovered through reading a lot of forms and information that make the water flow from bottom to top to force any water bubbles uh, that may incur into the system. Uh, to evacuate the system via the manifold up top. When we do flood the system, uh, I will be taking a few various steps to ensure that there are no water bubbles in the system. So as you can see, I have uh, placed the uh, CPU in the first, the Northbridge in the second, and the video card in the third. Um, I went this route just to make the hose uh, m minimalist that I could, and uh, for some sharp lines instead of uh, windy bits of hose everywhere that may get into loops that hold air or restrict water flow. Well, after a couple hours of finagling hose and wrangling it to where I uh, deemed it's going to fit, I'm uh, about to hook up my last hose, which is the GPU out. Uh, I'm happy with the placement of all the other hoses in the machine. I changed two. Uh, the first one now goes to the north bridge and the second one goes to the CPU. Uh, there is no differentiation between 
which hose goes where and uh, what flow it will get. Uh, if they're all open, they will all receive the same amount of flow. Here I have attached a, uh, two zip lines uh, to the bottom hose where the GPU is. Uh, as it is so close to the video card and the power port on the video card, I wanted to make sure that it would not touch the video card in any which way or form. Uh, when I install the power cables to the uh, video card, I also uh, put in some extra protection via uh, the cut hose. Here is the DC power supply with Molex connector for the D, uh, 5D D5 uh, pump that is currently in the box. Uh, the resurator itself has its own pump. Uh, once it's submerged, it will pump water. The D5 pump uh, will not be turned on until the system has uh, been flooded with water. Here we have the DASMO water protector and corrosion inhibitor and the Fesser blue dye UV reactor. Remember, follow the instructions as they are there for a reason. Uh, too little coolant and too little uh, in, uh, corrosion inhibitor will destroy your machine from inside out. Now everybody should know and discover what dye similar uh, corrosion is and it is basically when different metals contain water and is flowing between each uh, that there will be a different corrosion rate between each product. Here's me filling up my resurator. I fill it up to the top Unplugging, unwinding the cord and plugging it in. I'm currently letting gravity do its work. I'm readjusting the lines. Make sure there is no water bubbles. Uh, during this process, I will be picking up the resurator and Wadding, having water being forced through and pushing all the air bubbles out. The D5 pump in the machine itself is not currently running. Now that most of the water is out of the system, I feel that I can be, be safe enough to turn on the D5 pump. The reason why we have two pumps in the computer is in case one fails. Uh, the D5 pump is much stronger than the Zellman uh, resurator pump. But the Zellman Reservator pump by itself will circulate the water when the machine is turned off. As the system gets flooded, the water in the reservator becomes less and less, so you have to make sure that it's topped up until all the air bubbles are run out. This process will take quite a while. One benefit of running this PEC style quarter turn uh, manifold system is that I can flood each individual part by itself. 
if I ever need to replace the video cards, it's easy enough for me not to drain the entire machine. I just have to drain the line that it is in, remove the video cards, replace the video cards, and start the machine back up without a full empty of the water. Well, here's a time-lapse video of me putting dye in the water. Uh, thanks for watching. I very much enjoyed doing this build. It will not be my last. Uh, after four weeks of testing and putting this machine through its paces, uh, numerous 3D tests, numerous uh, performance tests, uh, and Battlefield 3 on Ultra after six hours, uh, will not get the temperature for this machine above 49 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is passive cooling, so it really does just warm up and cool down to ambient temperature. But uh, with the radiator on top, before it gets into the CPU and all the other, uh, it is a 10 degree drop from ambient temperature, which uh, keeps the machine at an extremely stable temperature, making it very, very fast and very performance worthy. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for uh, test and tuning. I will come up with a video in, in a couple of weeks and uh, show you guys that this machine is at, is incredibly stable at uh, at room temperature. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much for watching.